Drew. What do you mean, Drew? All right, you guys, welcome back to the show. This is a bit of a last minute shoot for you. Um, I'm sure you just finished watching our entire series on a bunch of Fast and Furious cars. Uh, we filmed the hero truck for the fourth movie and a bunch of other replicas. And today I am driving the Mona Lisa from, of course, Tokyo Drift, okay? Um, this is an S15 Spec R, Nissan Silvia S15 Spec R, obviously imported from the motherland, from Japan. And it is here now and has begun life uh, effectively right now, today, as a new part of Jorge's collection. Um, and now, usually, we're driving during the day and we film all of our videos during the day for the most part. Uh, but as you can see, the sun's going down. This car is literally leaving the province, um, you know, within a couple of hours. I, I believe tomorrow morning. So Tokyo Drift uh, is a, an important movie in the franchise for a number of reasons, and we've talked about this in the past before, but this is another one of those cars in the franchise that is so incredibly recognizable as part of both Sean's introduction as a character and Han's introduction as a character in that movie, even though it gets destroyed within the first few minutes. <laughs> And S15 is basically the perfect car to learn drifting in. Uh, S15s weigh anywhere from like 26 to 2,800 pounds, depending on whether you get the NA SR20 or you do in fact get the SR20 DET. So Mona Lisa is not just any S15. This is the car that sparks Sean's interest and drive to go further with drifting and to of course, in the end, beat DK in the mountains with an RB26 swapped Ford Mustang. Now, very interesting because in the movie itself, you don't explicitly actually know what is supposed to be under the hood of this S15 until later in the movie. Now, spoilers if you haven't watched the movie. But later in the movie, of course, you come to find out... <laughs> yeah, it's got a Nismo two-way in the back. Um, so later in the movie, you actually come to find out that in fact, this S15, the Mona Lisa that Sean's been driving, has an RB26 swapped into it under the hood. Uh, and then you've got that whole montage where Sean and the rest of the gang are building up this RB26 swapped Mustang. Um... <laughs> yeah, as soon as I got in the car, Martin was like, hey dude, it's got a two way in the back, like it's cold. It's definitely almost negative uh, or freezing temps outside right now. Uh, so be careful and yeah, damn straight, you gotta be careful. All right, so a car like this wouldn't really be anything without the hours and hours of work put into it. Uh, and I know we got a lot of comments on our last Fast and Furious videos 
about a lot of the details on some of the cars in Jorge's collection. Is it a real car? Is it a replica? Are those the right wheels? Is that the right wing? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right. Um, so here we are in front of Mona Lisa, and we're going to talk to uh, Martin Warbeck, who built a lot of this car and has built a few of Jorge's cars. You saw him uh, in our Too Fast, Too Furious uh, R34 Skyline video. And he's basically just going to tell you all the details on the car um, and we'll go over everything you've done. How's it going, Martin? How's it going? Tell me a little bit about Mona Lisa, kind of the process you went in, uh, in building this car. Uh, well, first off, I got to finish the car this time. Yeah. <laughs> Last time you remember with the Skyline, the vinyls weren't done and the wheels weren't correct. Mm -hmm. And everyone gave you heck about that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we have, a, I think, a 1999 Nissan Silvia S15. It was pearl white when it came in. Mm -hmm. Jorge, the owner, had this car for over a year, just sitting in Alberta, waiting for the parts, getting the body kit, getting the rims. And then he contacts me saying, hey, I'm shipping you down the Mona Lisa project. Mm -hmm. And I was excited because when he says it's ready, I can finally start my magic. I took the car apart. I gave it a complete blue paint job. The Sea West body kit fits so nice. Mm -hmm. I never like working with aftermarket stuff. If you remember that Civic that you see me in the other video, I was there for two days trying to fit two bumpers. Right? No kidding. Yeah. Well, I remember you were there for hours trying to get the strips and stuff on the front. Yeah. I literally put this, these bumpers on in five minutes. Mm -hmm. No cutting, no drilling, everything fit perfectly. Mm -hmm. So I was very happy with that. Uh, the car itself is a turbo model. The hero car in the movie has the RB26 twin turbo, uh, but the one that actually is driven around the majority of the time is the non-turbo Silvia. Mm -hmm. So this one is a good step up. Uh, the, the wheels are Volk Racing GT7s, uh, movie accurate 19 inch. Uh, the seat is a Recaro uh, Profi SPG. Yeah. Got the Buddy Club seat rail, and that one actually came in like a week and a half. Mm -hmm. Everything is a lot harder to get when you want to get the Bride or the Recaro seat rails. Uh, authentic NOS nitrous system. Uh, it is hooked up, and you do get built pressure onto the autometer gauges, uh, but there's nothing hooked up to the motor. Every aspect of this build, I got to see a genuine uh, stunt car. There's an owner in France, his name is Michael, and he purchased the real stunt Mona Lisa from, I believe, New Era Imports in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, from the New Era listing and also his personal Instagram and Facebook, I was able to study so many pictures that was not in the movie and make it as accurate as I humanly could. Uh, there's a couple little things that need to be fixed, uh, as Martin was telling me. The, the gunmetal stripe that you see on the rear quarter panel, that is in fact supposed to be a boatload of shades lighter. <laughs> it's supposed to be kind of like a more silver kind of color there, but a lot of the... So you can basically just flick it sideways <laughs> at a moment's notice. Um, so there is a few little things here and there that aren't uh, perfectly up to spec, up to movie spec, uh, but largely, I mean, out of all the cars we filmed out of Jorge's collection, this is like, this is probably my favorite. This and Hans RX-7. And the reason why this is probably my favorite, because this is the most functional out of all of the replicas, really, uh, <laughs> that Jorge has. Good power from the SR20. Definitely heard a couple pops and stuff back there. I'm sure it shoots a few flames. <laughs> I also love this as a movie car too because the interior here is completely gutted and that's how it was. The studio knew that they were gonna smash this car up, right? So they don't wanna go ahead and do anything crazy like some of the other builds and do like an insane interior, color matched interior. And because of that, uh, this actually turned out to be like one of the most authentic drift cars in Tokyo Drift. It's got a proper two way. It's got, uh, you know, one single nitrous bottle here and just sheet metal with some good old classic hot rod gauges. 
of course, I'd much rather there be an RB26 under the hood. I think, I think a lot of us, uh, for a lot of us, import enthusiasts, uh, an RB26 swapped S15 is basically the dream. It's been about a year since I've last driven an SR20, but they always seem to have really reliable torque and always, always enough torque to kick the back end out. Even with the factory LSD. Um, for the vinyl work, I also contacted uh, Ceramic Kings in Richmond, British Columbia. And I just gave him a bunch of pictures of the vehicle. I told him certain size requirements that I wanted because there is no standard template for these, uh, for the hood decals or the side stripes. So I told him I wanted a bunch of these in white, a bunch of these in black. I gave him the size proportions after using a bunch of Photoshop tools to measure it from the real car. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we did a good job. The windshield banner is nowhere to, to be found online. We couldn't get any vectors for. Mm -hmm. So all that was all custom done. Actually, this That's one cool. here, I couldn't find this image whatsoever. Yeah. So I actually made this myself in Photoshop. Oh, no way, actually. Yeah, I, I made That's the G and good. the T and I did this little custom design myself and I sent this image to someone else that cut small little vinyl decals. Yeah. And I stuck this on after the fact. But besides that, everything else was done by Ceramic Kings. Oh, sweet. I mean, yeah, the, the, the blue. So what blue is this? Is this a Sylvia blue? This is a factory color from the Sylvia, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's called TV3, mm -hmm. uh, but the color is extremely thin. So I started spraying some body kit parts. I think it was the, the bumpers and the side skirt. Mm -hmm. But after about four coats of blue, yeah, I could still see through it. No kidding. Yeah, so what I actually had to do, I stopped painting that evening. Yeah. I contacted Jorge saying, I need a, a ground color for this whole car. So I'm not even going to finish these, these parts. Yeah. So the next morning I picked up a gray ground coat. I sprayed it gray and then I, just two coats of blue, it looked perfect. Mm -hmm. Then I cleared it and I did that for every other part of the blue car. Uh, but then when it came down to the two-tone orange, the orange itself was thin again. So everywhere that you see orange, I had to spray white first right. to give it that nice pop. But it all turned out great. Wow, so, interesting, yeah. yeah. Even on the stunt car, all of the window controls are still functional. Uh, the only step left on this vehicle is a roll cage getting done in Alberta. I took off all the door panels, just like the stunt car, and I traced out to the every last detail, I guess, uh, where they have this raised edge along both door panels, including the rear deck and the back seat. That's all done, just like the movie car. Oh my God, the Sea West kit, so sick, so sick. Um, I, for me, I don't think, as far as an S15 um, aesthetic goes, I don't think there's really a kit that can beat the factory Spec R Aero kit on an S15. I just don't think like it's a nice kit. This is a good kit. I do like the Sea West Mona Lisa kit. Um, but <laughs> uh, it's nice and subtle and everything, but I, I just, the classic spec R aero kit is so aggressive, um, that it just, you know, it's hard to look at this and say, I would rather have this body kit over that. Uh, but really interesting, actually, you guys to go back and watch Tokyo Drift. Obviously I'm a big fan of the movie, but it's very interesting to go back in hindsight with kind of a, a, a 2020 perspective uh, and look at that scene, look at the 350Z next to the S15 drifting and you think to yourself, now in 2020, I mean, <laughs> two things have happened, okay? The 350Z has become the bargain drift platform of the century. It's basically the new 240 uh, and has gone down in value year over year, whereas the, the S15 has only gone up in value. Um, so if that says anything about those two cars, I'll let it speak for, I'll let it speak for itself. Um, but I'm just saying that the S15 for me, I hold, I hold the S15 in a much higher regard than I do the 350Z. And it's just interesting where the movie Tokyo Drift in 06 
placed these cars next to each other. It's great. This one has actually a two-way diff and uh, I knew what it was, uh, but I mentioned it to George, mm -hmm. and, oh sorry, Jorge, and he told me that he thought something was wrong with the, with the differential, <laughs> or with the, with the drive shaft. <laughs> yeah, with the car. <laughs> and I told him like, nope, uh, it's a two-way diff, and it is what it is, and he's like, well, how do you turn it off? <laughs> and then I'm like, nope, you can't turn it off. You have to change your diff if you want to take it away. No, everybody and the, the, is screaming on YouTube right now, yeah. like, this is the Dream S15. Two-way diff. Yeah, and if you've been watching my Instagram, uh, you can see I've already finished this car maybe like a month ago, almost, except for the spoiler. Mm -hmm. And we had problems trying to get this spoiler from Sea West, so we actually found this one in like, uh, I think, Yahoo Auctions. The only thing is when it arrived, we didn't know that the base was painted black and it was missing the actual legs. Mm -hmm. So I actually just got this spoiler this morning. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I had to sandblast those, uh, sandblast these legs because they were black. Yeah. And then I had to fabricate these mounts, pretty much just like what the movie has showed. And now it looks the part. Next up is Twinkie's Hulk car. And that one's already halfway done. We have all the items for the, for the car. We have the fists for the doors and the foot for the trunk. We have all the figurines. We got the pro, uh, proper wheels and the subs and the screens and the fur and the seat covers. Yeah. So that's what's going in next to the shop to do all the stuff. I'm just waiting for a few more um, ingredients for the, for the fists to be stuck onto the car. But yeah. I mean, so basically in the last month, you've built the Heist Civic, yeah. this, and now you're moving on to Twinkie's car. We've got Twinkie's car, we have Danny's Civic from Fast One. Mm -hmm. We have Dom's SRT from Fast Four Five, the mm -hmm. wide body challenger. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be more coming up, but that's <laughs> what I have right now on my plate, so. All right, you guys, so there it is. This is Mona Lisa. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We've got a bunch more videos coming up. Um, quickly, before we go, we just dropped a few new products on the store. If you guys haven't checked it out already, roadsandtravel.com. Uh, these are pretty much brand new. We've got forged carbon fiber and twill carbon fiber, S15, S14, S13. Uh, this is our SR20 engine code jet tag design. These designs, the SR20 and the RB26 as well, might be redesigned in the future. So I don't know how long they're gonna be on the store. Um, so if you want some of these older designs, now is the time to get them. And then these newer designs, we'll probably have continuing on into the new year. So once again, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you, Jorge, again, for letting me drive one of your crazy uh, Fast and Furious dream cars here. Um, and yeah, I just had so much fun. So if there's one video, for the rest of the year of hours that you're gonna hit the like button on. I mean, come on, when was the last time I asked you guys to smash the like button? This is the video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.